Hollow Knight is a 2D Metroidvania video game released in 2017. Its combination of beautiful animation, challenging gameplay, and a soundtrack for the ages helps to distinguish it from other titles in the genre. Team Cherry, the indie developer responsible for the game, drew inspiration from classic games such as Metroid, Mega Man, and Zelda during development. But Hollow Knight has also been compared to FromSoft's marquee series Dark Souls. While not considered as difficult as the Soulsborne games, certain achievements in Hollow Knight create difficulty for even the most experienced gamers. Steel Soul is one of these achievements, and its premise is simple. Beat the game without dying. If you die, you start over from the beginning. When I played the game in 2020, I opted to pass on this challenge and come back at a later date because I knew it'd be a significant test for me. For reference, I died over 60 times during my first playthrough. What follows next is my Steel Soul adventure four years later, a journey through the underground world of Hollow Nest to wake the dreamers and defeat the Hollow Knight, all without a single death. Also, I stream these playthroughs on Twitch and YouTube, so if you ever want to watch these playthroughs live, follow and subscribe to those accounts. Enjoy! My fourth attempt at this challenge started with my character falling down a well for a reason I still don't know. I traversed a cave full of platforms and small enemies before arriving at a beautifully intricate wall with light shining through. After observing its beauty for less than a second, I broke it down, jumped off a cliff, and arrived in Dirtmouth, the first location in the game. Early on, there's very little to do here, so I ran by quickly and jumped down another well into the forgotten crossroads. I ventured left, avoided some dune worms, and quickly found myself at the first boss of the run, Kevin James in a suit of armor, more commonly known as False Knight. Being an early game boss, the knight's moveset is simple and easy to dodge. After beating him up a bit, he jumped up, broke the floor, and plummeted down below. I added the finishing touches, and the first boss was dead. I picked up the city crest and continued on my way. Soon after, I met the snail shaman, who gave me a ranged spell in exchange for some yard work. With my new ranged ability, I gained access to Green Path, the jungle-like section of the game. I performed a simple skip to save some time, and soon found myself face to face with Hornet, a female character hell-bent on stopping me from progressing in the game. After embarrassing her on the battlefield, I was awarded the Mothwing Cloak, which gave me the ability to dash and significantly increased my platforming speed. I left Greenpath and traveled south into Fog Canyon, an area full of electric and explosive jellyfish. My visit to the canyon was short as I was just cutting through, but we'll make an appearance here later on. I arrived at Queen Station, a separator between Fog Canyon and the Fungal Wastes, but also home to a Stag Station. Stag Stations are a method of fast travel in the game. Typically, you pay Geo, the in-game currency, to open up a station, and then you can travel to any of the stations you have already opened. So I paid the Geo, opened the station, and continued on my way. I entered the Fungal Wastes, a fungi-filled area with mushroom enemies and acid pits. I climbed up and faced off against the Mushroom Bodyguards, two girthy boys who slammed their heads into the ground when you get too close. They didn't put up much of a fight and I scurried past. Eventually I showed up in Mantis Village, my next destination. This village was home to some quick enemies who were upset at my trespassing. I killed these villagers nobly defending their hometown and stole one of their claws. The Mantis Claw allowed me to climb and jump off walls, which was exactly what I needed to reach the next area of the game. I traversed a simple platforming section, slammed the city crest into a statue, and opened the path to the City of Tears. The City of Tears is a large area of the game, home to a few important landmarks. Firstly, the Nailsmith lived here. For a small fee, he honed my main weapon and increased its strength. He could upgrade my nail up to four times, but at this point, I only had the materials for one upgrade. Secondly, the City of Tears was home to the Soul Sanctum, my next destination. I arrived at the Sanctum, and fought some of its floating sorcerers before arriving at the mini-boss, a rapier-wielding pill bug who almost ended one of my early deathless attempts. Because of that experience, I always take this battle seriously, much to his dismay. I dismantled him easily and quickly found myself at the main boss, Soul Master. He was a large spellcaster who clearly didn't miss too many meals. Think Kevin James, but as a spellcaster. He flung his rotund body around the arena at me while occasionally casting fireballs in my direction. After a short while, his body seemed to explode into numerous pieces, and another ability was waiting for me. Well, not quite yet. There was a phase two in an area below the initial arena. Soulmaster tried to body slam me over and over again before realizing it wasn't working. Once he stopped, 
I took advantage and used my nail to bring his life to a swift end. And with that, I received my next ability, the Desolate Dive. This ability allowed my character to slam into the ground, breaking weak floors and unlocking new areas. Using Desolate Dive, I swiftly exited the Soul Sanctum and began the trek to my next destination. I found a nearby stag station, unlocked it, and traveled back to Dirtmouth. Jumping back into the Forgotten Crossroads, I headed far to the right, dove through a rocky floor, and arrived at Crystal Peak, a mining facility chock full of annoying enemies. Most of Crystal Peak is platforming past these enemies and moving platforms, and once you know the path through, it isn't too bad. So I flew through the area and obtained my next ability, the Crystal Heart, a long-range dash that allows you to fly in one direction until you hit something. I pieced out of Crystal Peak and went back to the Forgotten Crossroads. I took a different turn than before and arrived at a small enclosed arena where I met another mini-boss, a pregnant bug. Gru's mother was her name and she went down quickly. Her premature children emerged from her corpse and were similarly torn down one by one. Fresh off destroying an entire family, I met Salubra who sold various charms. Charms are badges you can equip that give your character additional attributes or change gameplay in some way. I bought a charm that causes my abilities to do more damage and went on my way. I entered a nearby hut and woke up Sly, a different shopkeeper, from a drunken stupor so that I could buy items from him later on. I found myself at the resting grounds and was transported to the dream world by the three dreamers. Saved by an angelic figure, I left the dream world and was given the dream nail, an item that allows me to wake the dreamers from their slumbers. I traveled south from the resting grounds, back to the City of Tears, and decided to call it quits for the night right before the boss who ended my previous run, Watcher Knights. Not only did they end my previous run, but they also ended runs 1 and 2. During my original playthrough of the game in 2020, I died to these guys over 40 times. Needless to say, I had somewhat of a mental block against them, so I decided I would take them on during the next stream. Next stream began, and I immediately chickened out. I postponed the Watcher Knights fight until I acquired a few more abilities that would make the fight easier. I headed toward the Ancient Basin, one of the lowest points in Hollow Nest. I utilized the Crystal Heart to fly across a large gap that led to another boss, Broken Vessel. Per the boss's design, you can probably guess that we were related in some way. Despite this, there was no love lost between us and we both attempted to end the other's life. Broken Vessel jumped erratically throughout the arena and summoned floating enemies to help take me down. Unfortunately for him, it was not enough to stop me and a couple ranged spells helped to put an end to Broken Vessel. His defeat allowed me to acquire the Monarch Wings, which is, at its core, a double jump. Knowing the game well helped to inform my next destination. I headed to the far east side of the map, all the way to the edge of the Kingdom of Hollow Nest, or, as the devs so expertly named it, Kingdom's Edge. Once I was fully at the furthest edge of the kingdom, I ran into Hornet again. At this point, she had accepted that I was doing something good for Hollow Nest, but I needed to prove my strength to her one final time. The fight began in a similar manner to our first encounter, with diving attacks, long-range javelin throws, and an AoE attack. But she had a few new tricks up her sleeve this time. These caught me off guard, and I was down to just one mask of health left. One hit, and my deathless run would be over. I took a few deep breaths and composed myself. I was able to dodge her a few times and heal back up to 4 HP. Once there, I went back on the offensive, but this wouldn't be the last time she got me to one mask. It would happen another three times where I teetered on the edge of life and death. Eventually, after escaping near death four times, I fired off one final long range spell and put an end to the battle. She allowed me to pass and I obtained the King's Brand. Newly branded, I retraced my steps to the Ancient Basin and entered a new area opened with the power of the King's Brand. This new area was known as the Abyss and was the true lowest point within Hollow Nest. The Abyss is full of ghost-like shades actively trying to impede my progress. I turned on a massive lighthouse, flew to the right, and acquired the Shade Cloak. Shade Cloak provides invulnerability while dashing, which is a huge upgrade, especially for someone who spams dash like I do. With my newfound ability, I climbed back out of the Abyss, spoke quickly to Hornet, and headed up to Crystal Peak for one final pit stop before the Watcher Knights. I climbed back to the peak of Crystal Peak, grabbed the Pale Ore, and headed to the Nailsmith. I upgraded my nail with a combination of Geo and the Pale Ore, and finally felt confident dashing over to Watcher Knights. The first knight spawned, and the fight began. I took the first one down just as the second one began to spawn. 
The third one spawned in quickly, and I was fighting two of them at once, how the fight is supposed to take place. I did my best to dodge their attacks, but I got hit by a swing attack, and then immediately by a roll attack. I took the second one down, and then the third. Only two left. I had been here before, and did not want to blow it again. I chose my windows correctly, and this finally happened. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh my god, that's it. Oh. Nice. I thought there was one more. Oh my god, my heart is beating so fast. Let's go. I rode the elevator up and dream nailed the first dreamer. I was teleported to the dream world and woke up Lorian from his slumber. One dreamer down, two to go. I decided Harrow was my next target. I gathered some money and retreated to Dirtmouth to buy the Lumafly Lantern from Sly, the drunken shopkeeper I saved earlier. The Lumafly Lantern lights up dark areas and was needed for my next destination. Along with the Lantern, I bought some Mask Shards to increase my overall max health to 6 in preparation of the endgame. With my shopping spree now over, I headed south toward Mantis Village. Though I was here earlier in the run, I didn't complete everything in the village. In order to access the area to the west of Mantis Village, you need to challenge and defeat the Mantis Lords. Mantis Lords is a two-phase boss fight. In the initial phase, you fight one Mantis. Once you defeat the first, you fight the final two simultaneously in phase two. Since they are more of an early game boss, I wiped the floor with them, gained their honor, and proceeded on my way into Deep Nest. Deep Nest is a dark, cavernous section of the game full of creepy crawlies and winding pathways. I lost my way in here for about 20 minutes before arriving at the distant village, the most western point of Hollow Nest. I scaled to the top of the village, activated a stag station, and entered the village's main building. I was coerced to sit on a bench, and everyone in the room crept toward me like a frat guy who just saw a freshman girl. I blacked out. Coming to, I was tied up to the ceiling in a spider's web. I cut myself free and traversed through the beast's den. Eventually, I made my way to the top and found Hera, the second dreamer. I dream nailed her and woke her from her slumber. Another dreamer down, one to go. I ran into Hornet who dropped the bomb that I just killed her mom and then I left her to let her think about what I'd done. I exited the den and took the stag to Queen Station. I left Queen Station and headed back into Fog Canyon, the area I promised we'd revisit. I platformed past multiple jellyfish and electric surges and wound up at the teacher's archives. I spoke to Quirrell outside before venturing into the building. The archives are not very large, and I soon found myself in a platformed arena where the next boss rose from the acid pit below. Umu was a massive electric jellyfish who was invulnerable to my attacks. Luckily, Quirrell from outside joined me in the fight and created openings for me. I dodged Umu's attacks that included an electric charge that chased me around the arena, as well as a different electric attack that targeted 30% of the arena at once. Eventually, Quirrell and I took Umu down and I was standing in front of the final dreamer. Monomon. I dream nailed him and woke him from his slumber. The final dreamer down, zero to go. The path to the final boss was now open. I traveled to the nearest stag station and rode to Dirtmouth. I prepared myself for battle, jumped into Forgotten Crossroads and headed for the Temple of the Black Egg. I cracked the egg open and dashed for the final arena. After four hours, it was time to fight the final boss and claim victory over this challenge. I cut down the boss from its chains and I was face to face with the Hollow Knight. I dodged his attacks, chose my openings, and made it past phase one with very little trouble. I started phase two, confident and ready to win. I'll let you watch the ending. No!
No! Oh my god, it hurts you too. <laughs> oh my god, it hurts you too. Wow. And just like that, attempt number four came to an end. Tantalizingly close, just short of glory. I ended my stream soon after, understandably demoralized and embarrassed. Another four hours wasted. My confidence was drained, and I was back at the beginning of the game. Day five. I had a devastating loss to the Hollow Knight at the end of last stream. I got to the very final boss and died. Kind of choked it. So now we're going to try and beat it all tonight. Still slightly demoralized, I wanted to get through this next attempt as quickly as possible. And that's exactly what I did. I sped through the run. I grabbed the dash. I grabbed the claw. I got the dive, double jump, and shade cloak. I was platforming confidently and gracefully as if I were a seasoned speedrunner. I tackled the Watcher Knights, killed Hornet's mom again, and defeated Umo. And after a quick three hours, I was standing in front of the Hollow Knight yet again, ready for redemption. Okay. Second phase. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. We are so close. So close. Come on. Let's do it. Let's go. Come on. Dude, finally. <laughs> I feel I feel good. I feel good about this at the moment. Imagine. Dude, you are not hitting the right guy. You're supposed to be hitting me, buddy. Dude. <laughs> we have done it.
you played skillfully and proved you have a steel soul. Thank you for taking the time to explore and conquer the world we built. We'll meet again soon with a new challenge for you. Yay. <laughs> I feel great. So there it is. That's the story of how I overcame failure and beat Hollow Knight without dying, accomplishing a goal I set for myself four years ago. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, I hope you'll consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as it helps me out a lot. Until next time, take care.